A lot of buyers and real estate agents are infatuated with the idea of floor to ceiling glass because it has better views and allows more light, but good architects and engineers know that more glass doesn't necessarily mean a better building. In fact, a lot of the times you're compromising the energy performance when you could have thick walls with solid insulation that allow the building to perform better in the long run and even give you more flexibility when laying out your furniture, for example. Many of the older condos that do use the full height window wall all glass construction have shown to have higher failure rates over time. When the developers were deciding how much to spend on the building, they ultimately chose the lowest cost option, which at the time was also the lowest quality option. And so what you get is gaskets failing, leaking around the perimeter, and now all of a sudden you're left with a massive bill that either has to come out of the pooled fees of the condo corporation, or in some cases is added on as an additional fee that you have to pay directly out of pocket. You would assume that knowing these types of things would have made it easier when looking for my first condo unit because I had all of this knowledge and set of criteria, but the reality is it actually made it more challenging because I had very strong opinions about what I felt made for a good building and for a good condo unit. This year I purchased an investment condo with my dad and quickly realized that the types of things I was looking for with my background in architecture and construction weren't necessarily the same things that he was looking for. So a little bit of the backstory behind this whole adventure is that my dad and I were looking to get into an investment condo because my sister was looking to rent a place downtown. This ended up being a win-win because we would be getting a tenant that we knew and trusted and she could be involved in the whole process, allowing us to learn what it would be like to be a landlord along the way. What was one of the things at the top of your list that you were looking for when buying a condo? Location. A demand location that people wanted to live in, but also close to amenities with a good walkability score. I didn't want to be too high up and I didn't want to be too low down, so I feel like we're in a good spot. But I did want a sunset view just so that I could see like the sun setting from my windows, but I go on walks and I see the sunset anyways, so it's not like a it's not like a deal breaker, but that was kind of like the main thing, but the place we found was good enough lighting that I was like, okay, it doesn't need to have sunset view, as long as I'm not facing a brick wall. Having worked on condo units in the past, I realized fairly quickly that the types of things I was looking for were very different than the things that they were looking for. Which brings me to my first tip, square footage. Now, of course, we were all interested in getting as much square footage for our dollar value as possible. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there's a listed square footage and then there's like a usable square footage. The usable square footage is less because the actual listed square footage includes things like mechanical space, the walls, and what a lot of people don't realize is that it actually includes the walls that border your unit. So if your unit is eight meters deep and there's a 300 millimeter foot deep concrete wall, you've actually lost a meter squared or 10 feet squared of space to the wall that is separating the unit next to you. Another thing too is that the area actually extends to the exterior face of the exterior wall of your unit. So if you've got big thick walls or if you've got architectural elements like projections, the listed area that's on that floor plan can include 10 or 20 square feet of space that's not actually usable because it's added to the exterior envelope. Another thing people don't consider is that if you're next to an elevator or a stair and it's a big concrete building, sometimes those walls, again, are a foot thick or even 600 millimeters thick in really, really tall buildings. That area gets added to your unit. In particular, if you're next to a stair or elevator, there's gonna be a big chunk of your unit area listed on that condo floor plan that's completely unusable. Of course, some of these things are just unavoidable like mechanical shafts, we obviously need those, but being next to an elevator or a stair is something you can be intentional and look for. Which brings me to my next point. What are you actually next to? A lot of people will typically look at a floor plan and go, okay, I'm next to a mechanical room. I don't wanna be next to a mechanical room. I don't wanna be next to an elevator. I don't wanna be next to a stair, but also what's above and below you, especially if there's something like a roof rooftop terrace or an amenity space or a parking garage ramp, all of those things can generate noise. And while the acoustic requirements 
that separate those spaces are getting better and better where there's been maintenance and maybe some work has been done and now there's a hole and noise is coming through. Those are some things you're gonna wanna pay attention to. In pre-construction, sometimes you don't really have an option of knowing, which is why a lot of the times I'll look at things like the architectural renderings and kind of count up the floors and say, okay, you know, the fourth floor, there's like a transfer there or there's a tier in the tower. I don't wanna be on the fourth floor because I know there's gonna be a lot of servicing. If you're below an amenity space, whether that's a rooftop amenity or like a gym, there's gonna need to be drains that come down through the floor and transfer over the top of your unit. If there's ever maintenance maintenance work that needs to be done, or if a drain gets clogged and they need to tear out the ceiling and do some maintenance and rebuild it, that's gonna be a massive inconvenience to you. And this brings us to tip number three, which is avoid a bad layout. Um, I wanted a separate bedroom. I wanted an open concept like kitchen. I didn't wanna have like weird walls and like weird little nooks and crannies that made the space feel smaller. And ideally I wanted it obviously around well, maybe more than 500 square feet because anything below that we looked at ones that were really under like 400 like 360 that's why studio was completely off our list like we really didn't want to get a studio it would be too small the layout was important we've seen a lot of condos that were skinny and long we saw some that looked into an either a northern direction or into another building some that we saw were small some we did some didn't have a balcony now we can all look at a floor plan and visit a unit and understand really quickly, okay, this unit is either gonna be good for me to lay everything out or maybe there's some weird geometry. But another thing a lot of people don't consider is the actual location of the unit in the building. For example, a south facing or a west facing unit is gonna get a lot more sun exposure, which can be good in colder climates, but during hot seasons can also lead to overheating. We visited one unit, which was a penthouse unit. This was a south facing unit at the very top of the building and not only did it have problems with overheating from the sun but it also suffered from stack effect now if you've ever tried to go into the ground floor door of an office building where there's no vestibule and tried to open the door sometimes you'll notice that it's really hard and as soon as you open the door all this wind rushes by you and that's because of a pressure differential where at the bottom of the building there's cooler air that's trying to enter the building and at the top of the building there is warmer air that's trying to leave the building. Now with newer buildings, the amount of ceiling and the vestibules and all that stuff that they add kind of reduces that. But the building that we saw, as soon as we walked into that penthouse unit, I was like, this is a hot unit. This is gonna be problematic. This one's getting crossed off our list. And to the obvious things like the actual layout of the unit, Sometimes you get these really long corridors from the actual hallway into your unit and you wonder like, why didn't they just make this more efficient? And a lot of the time is that is because a developer is gonna try to maximize as much square footage on the site as possible. We saw one unit, for example, that was super deep. It was on the interior of a courtyard. The pictures we saw online looked great. There was flash photography, which made it look super bright. But when we actually got to the unit, it was extremely dark. The best bedroom had a sliding glass door and if you ever decided to close it, you would basically be living in the dark. And again, this comes back to the developers wanting to maximize the amount of units and the amount of square footage that they can get on the site, even if it means building a unit that is less than ideal. My ultimate advice when looking for a unit to either buy or rent is get something that is as typical as possible. One thing I haven't talked about at all is the actual look of the building. Now that might surprise you given my background in architecture, but for me, if I'm inside of a condo unit, I don't care too much what the exterior looks like. I actually care more about the function and the performance of it, which is why my next tip is avoid all glass facades if possible. Is that is the look of the building something for you that played into the determining like the factor at all? What Literally like not it? at all. There were certain buildings I was like, we have to avoid ice condos. <laughs> if you know, you know. There are certain buildings that I knew we had to avoid because um, I did research and I watched a lot of 
uh, Toronto real estate agents on TikTok. As mentioned at the beginning, glass does have its drawbacks in terms of energy performance, but it also has drawbacks in terms of the layout and efficiency of your suite. A glass corner, for example, still needs structural support. And so we even saw one unit where there was this big fat round concrete column right in the corner. And that can be very difficult to not only put furniture around, but if you ever need to change the floor finish or get behind the column and paint, there's very limited space, which makes it almost impossible. Sitting right next to a big glass window can also be uncomfortable, whether that's in the summer where it gets too hot or in the winter where it just takes all of the heat out of the unit. Window technology has been improving over the years, but there's only so much we can do with coatings and triple glazing to the point where with newer energy codes, you're probably gonna start seeing buildings with less glass and more solid wall to meet those codes. Likewise, a lot of balconies are designed where the concrete slab just extends right out. That can be a source for heat escaping the building or cold getting in to the point where it can cause condensation around the perimeter when it's negative 20 outside and positive 20 inside. And if you've got a wood floor or nice finishes and they start to absorb moisture, now all of a sudden your finishes are ruined and you need to spend your own money to replace them. On the topic of glass, my next point is to avoid units where there is no window in the bedroom. What were some of the things that stood out to you among all the units that we saw that fed into your decision of what you liked? I definitely, oh, I forgot to mention this. I wanted a bedroom with windows because yeah. a lot of the apartments we saw, the bedrooms were when you first walked in and there wasn't any windows and I just knew I wouldn't like that because I also have to work from home. So I have to work from my bedroom. The reason why this place out of all the other places stood out was because there are big windows in the bedroom and I have a little nook for my office. Big windows, good lighting, a separate bedroom. As long as you had lighting, not necessarily a view. Yeah. That was important. Mm -hmm. We've all seen the types of units where the bedroom is not against an exterior wall and it's slightly inboard and it's either got a sliding glass wall or a sliding glass corner, which can actually make it very difficult to change the layout in your unit. Now the building code does allow these types of bedrooms to exist because there's a minimum amount of light that needs to get into those units. And the way they achieve that is through the frosted glass doors that you see on those bedrooms. Now, some people are okay with that, but for me personally, having to have that door open all the time to get any light into your bedroom kind of makes it difficult if you ever want to change the actual layout of your bedroom. We did see one unit that was a very wide unit. And so the bedroom with the sliding glass doors was actually pretty close to the exterior wall, in which case that's a little bit more reasonable. But what happens more often than not is that the unit is so narrow and deep that the developer makes a decision to bear the bedroom far back into the unit and what happens is it almost gets no light at all. Okay so out of all the units that we saw doesn't necessarily have to be this one but was there one that you liked the most and what was your reason? Oh yeah hundred percent. The one with the one bedroom plus den that was like it had the sunset view it was slightly bigger it had a locker it had a parking spot it had everything but it was too much out of our price range. I think the only thing though the bedroom was didn't have windows though. One last final bonus tip I have is around den space. Personally, I like the idea of having a den, but more often than not, the den exists because the developer didn't have enough space or enough light requirements to actually make a two bedroom unit. So my word of advice is to be cautious when you see a unit that has a den, actually measure it and lay it out so that when you're looking at it, you can see if it's actually usable for what you wanna do. In total, we looked through hundreds of online listings visited about 15 of them and ultimately bid on three. And yes, we got into a bidding war and had to buy the unit without conditions, which is pretty much the market standard. Is owning a condo more or less of a headache than what you expected? Oh, it's, it's less. A house obviously requires more work and more expense. There are a lot of small repairs to do when we first took over. And that's just the previous owner not either having the experience or even knowing based on their renter. Right. If you could go back to earlier this year and tell yourself anything, what would you tell yourself? Downtown Toronto is a huge area. Even though it's COVID-19, everyone has kind of left the city. 
So if this is how it is when people have left the city, it's only going to become much more of a demand area when people come back. We did end up finding some problems with the unit, but ultimately didn't have to spend more than $1,000 to get them fixed. The biggest takeaway here is to kind of educate yourself on what you're getting. Don't just look at your individual unit, but look at what's next to you. Look at what other options are. If we continue down the path of accepting of what developers are producing, then it's going to be hard to accelerate the change that is necessary to improve both the quality and the performance of our condo buildings. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that you felt this video was worth watching. I'm going to have some more architecture related content coming in the future, kind of related to photography and then some that will be standalone. So if you're interested in any of that at all, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one. Anything else you want to add? My nose is tickling from all the rapid tests I'm doing at work. <laughs> <laughs> My nose is tickling. Dad's on a talk show now. Yes, that's it. Is that great for you? <laughs> that is, works. This, is this everything you dreamed it that would be? That works perfectly. Come Thank and see you. my place, even though you can literally see it all from this one shot. It's pretty, pretty much. It's Welcome to my home. Great. Your turn, Dad.